welcome back to Wildwood Cottage and welcome back to Wales. It's a lovely afternoon here today. I hope you're all doing well and that you're having a good week. I've had a busy week. I've been busy sorting out my polytunnel. But in today's video, I thought that we would have a look at the uh, side of the polytunnel um, and get that sorted. So I'm going to take you around the side and show you that. But I've been hissing fence posts in, so I'm a bit out of breath, so excuse me. But uh, I found the netting I want to use down the side of the polytunnel and uh, we'll hopefully get that sorted today and then that'll be that job done another job under the belt so to speak so like i explained here i want to try and cover the plastic over a bit because i'm not sure whether the uh, landlord's going to like looking at my polytunnel every time they walk past so i'm not going to use any trellis here i'm going to get some mesh or some plastic uh, trellis to put up the sides here and up that side there. I'm going to do the same down that end of the polytunnel on the outside and then here is where I'm working today. So I've put a fence post here, it's all been hammered in and I've done it wide enough away from the polytunnel so as not interfere with the foundation posts and then what I'm going to do then is I'm going to put another piece here at this point here, another piece at that point there and then something else at that point over there. And then that's then going to be what holds up this. But I'm not sure whether to use um, bamboo canes and just be done with it with the bamboo canes on the front here. But along here, as you can see, I put in three fence posts. I want to put one more in, one on each hoop. And uh, they've all been hammered in now, so that's why I was breathless. But this is what I'm going to use. It's this mesh here. It's the same as what I've used there as my trellis over there. So I'm going to use this stuff, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to attach some tree branches like this to my fence post. My fence posts are going to add the stability in the wind. Um, and then for a decorative feature, I'm going to use some tree branches. And you know, I'm going to attach this to the tree branches and the fence post. And uh, I, I think I've got enough. I've got quite a bit there. Um, I was hoping I was going to do the fence at the back with it, but you know, I don't really need to do that fence. So I think I'm going to use it for this job. At least until I can find something else that will be suitable to do along there. Because I don't want to use chicken wire, as my chicken wire is earmarked for uh, chicken tunnels. So I've still got to do the top here. But I thought today I would tackle this bit along here, and then that's going to screen the polytunnel off a bit there. The tree branches are going to add a bit more height and then I'm going to put this, I'm not going to put it right down the bottom, I'm going to put it away from the ground because the plants are then going to grow up to the trellis and then up the trellis. So rather than we have to use too much of this, I'm going to start it higher up. So I'm going to start it about a foot away from the ground and then it'll come up a bit higher and I'm hoping it's going to come up to this point here. So that will be good for that and then I can grow my pasture fruits that I've got here and my clematis up this and you know it's just as good as the stuff that you can find on eBay that you buy which is that stuff down there. I mean that stuff 10 metres by a metre is £27 a roll so I think this is just going to be just as good so I'm going to use this. It's a little bit battered, a little bit manky but I'm sure it'll be fine. So that's what we're going to use along there. I don't know whether this rose is staying here. I was going to grow this rose up and over there, but I uh, haven't decided yet. So it can stay there for the time being. It's a rambling rector. It seems to be happy. It seems to be recovering now after being shocked, the shock of being moved. So yeah, so I'm just going to go and try and find my other fence post, get on with hammering that in, and then I'm going to get on with sticking this up. So I'll see you in a minute. So I put it so it's far enough away, I get my basher, solid as a rock. So I've done that now. That's solid as a rock, not going anywhere. Got another one down there and two behind me. So I'm going to sort out some tree branches and then we're going to attach them to that. And then we're going to attach the mesh to the whole thing. Sort that out. So see you in a minute. Right, okay. 
So what we're doing now is I've got some posts and I'm going to attach them to this bit of wood and we're going to screw through and screw them on I think if I've got long enough screws so I just have to see what screws I've got yeah I think they'll do turn it that way we won't have anything sharp then There's the drill gone, just add that. So we've got our piece of wood, we've got our screw. Right, so, so that's one done, one anchored. Just got two more to go. So just got these two to do, this one here and this one here. And this one's done so it looks a lot better so I'll just get on with them and then I'll show you when it's done later since um, I did the size of the polytunnel and the greenhouse the polytunnel's all finished everything's all in everything's growing away really happy got cucumbers growing and uh, yeah it's doing really really well so um, yeah I finished doing all I'll just turn you around and I'll show you I finished doing all the side I put this green screen up um, to try and break up the wind a little bit as well. So what I've done is I've put this plastic stuff that I've got here as well that I'm using as a trellis. I still need to fix that in to keep it off the cows. But uh, what I've done is I've planted up this side now. It's all completely finished. Um, I used my tree branches and then I put this trellis up and then I put the green screen behind it. Here I've got passion fruits and they're growing really, really well. I'm going to have these lovely flowers on it soon. So I've got those. And then on either side I've got cucumbers in there. These are pickling cucumbers. I've got them all the way along. And then I've got a clematis here that's now got some nice new growth on. That was a pound plant um, in the garden centre. So let me just try and get in. You can see it's got some nice new growth. So it's happy there. It's getting established. Um, and then I've got a pickling cucumber here. And then I've got another passion fruit. And then I did have a pickling cucumber, but that died off in all the rain. It wasn't strong enough. And then I've got another clematis here, which is um, a plant from Morrison's that I got for a pound. Another cucumber. Another cucumber there. And then I've got another um, passion fruit, which needs really to be anchored up so that the slugs can't get it. I've got some coffee grounds to go down, but uh, it needs to be anchored up so the slugs can't get it. The wind keeps blowing it, so I need to tie it in. And then I've got another clematis. My mallow didn't recover, but I'm gonna leave it in and give it 12 months and see if it comes back next year. It may well do, we'll just have to see. It's still got quite a bit of uh, sappy branches, so we'll just have to see. This is um, a dwarf mulberry, so I'm thinking of leaving that there. I've done the trellis all the way around the side there and on the other side of the door there. Um, I have secured the bamboo canes to stop it blowing in the wind, so hopefully that will keep the, uh, pla the frame up on the side. <coughs> 
there's some um, mustard that comes back every year. It grows by itself. Um, so that's happy. This is the amaranth that I planted. Hasn't done very well at all. This here hasn't done very well at all. Um, and then I've got an aubergine here and it does have a flower on it. It has got a bit of slug trail on it so I do need to put some coffee grounds around that as well. But uh, yeah that's doing really really well. It's doing better than the ones that are in the polytunnel. And then I've got a kale here. Um, and then I've got courgette planted in front of the passion fruit. So I've got a courgette there, a courgette there, another one there, and then another one further up. So there's courgettes all the way along there. And then I've got spinach at the front, another Russian kale. Um, I'm not sure what this one is, but I've put it in anyway, and we'll see what comes. And then another spinach, and then another Russian kale. So that's what I've done all the way along the front. These are yellow courgettes. I don't know whether you can see the yellow in there if I move out the way. That's a yellow courgette. Um, and that's what they all are along the front there. They were all grown from seed. Uh, this is a type of spinach. I've not had it before. I don't know what it is, but it looks very pretty and it seeded itself there. So I don't know how to use it. If anybody knows how to use this, please do let me know. But I just think it looks really pretty and it came all by itself. So... I'm just going to let it grow, it seems happy. And then here at the front, to grow up this bit here, I've got butternut squash. Now these were plants that I got in little. Showed you them earlier in the season. These ones here. Now these do look like they've got a bit of slug damage on them, so I do need to try and sort them out. Excuse my shadow, the sun's right behind me. You can see the slug damage on the flower here. So yeah, I do need to try and sort them out. I've got another one here and another one there. So something seems to be eating the flowers off the top. So I've no idea what's going on here. But as you can see, it's going to trail. So the idea is that I can get it to grow up my frame here. So that's what I'm going to do with that. I did have a butternut squash but somebody's been eating it. Typical. I planted some comfrey there and that seems to be coming back okay. I've got some more spinach to go in so that's actually going to go in the garden itself because there's not much growing in the garden at the moment. And then I've finished my arch. I'll just stand back and show you that. I've finished my arch way here now. It's got all the top bit on. Um, and then down this side here, I've got one of those plants that I showed you in my last video with the lantern flower on. And then I've got a clematis here, which is another plant I got from the garden centre. I think this one was a pound. Yeah, it was a pound as well. And it's growing really, really well. Lovely blue flowers it'll have on it. These here. So I was really pleased with that for a pound. Try not to pay full price if I can. And then I've got a daisy here, which seems to be establishing itself nicely. It's got loads of nice new growth down there. This is a Loganberry. Oh, and the berry's ready to eat. Mmm, they're delicious. That was Gordon's. So that needs to find a home. And if you see my rose, isn't it beautiful? It's nearly finished now, it's been absolutely gorgeous and it smells lovely. Can you see the little bud? And there's another bud here. Now it's supposed to be a climber but it doesn't seem to be very climby. Well, I'm hoping that's going to fill this space here with the clematis. I'm hoping they're going to fill half each. But I have got more clematis I can put in. I might put another one here at the bottom down here. And then I've got something else to fill this space. I've got my buddleia as well, this buddleia here, and it's getting re-established again. It's got new growth. So that seems happy. I need to sort all these nettles out. Because I can't walk down here at the moment in my sandals. My hedge isn't coming back yet. I'm hoping it's going to perk up a bit. But as yet, it's not come back. Um, what else have we got? I haven't done any more here. Haven't had the time, been very busy. Um, 
these were going to go back in but you know I'm not sure they're going to do anything they have got roots on them but uh, I'm not sure they're going to grow I have got an idea of something else that I want to put in uh, from the hedge in the middle of the garden but you know they just don't seem to be coming back maybe they'll come back again next year so I'm just going to leave them and see what they do this doesn't seem to be coming back either now I was hoping this would but it seems to still have green in it so maybe it just needs time to perk up but I've got another couple of things I want to plant here I'm thinking of putting honey berries along here but I'm not sure yet I'm not, I don't want to rush and plant anything and then along here and there's another hedging plant what I've been doing is I've been screwing branches so that I can grow things up and they can grow along the top here um, what I found the other day when the cows came was that they were nuzzling against the fence here and I'm not sure it's because they can see things through the screen so I'm going to put some black weed membrane behind that can you hear the adders? actually do you know what? I think they're grasshoppers I can see one down there. I think he's gone. Yeah, I think it's the grasshoppers, you know, scratching their legs. Yeah, they're grasshoppers. Mystery solved. It's not adders, it's grasshoppers. So yes, this section here, I'm going to put some uh, black weed membrane along here to try and distract the attention of the cows until my plants have established because I put a climbing rose here and I put a honey, a honeysuckle over there and then I'm going to do another couple of climbing things on these posts here because I've got some other stuff to go in I've also got some uh, Hypenicum uh, St John's Wort as well that I want to go in front here so that'll be nice I can't plant anything on the other side of the fence um, because the cows they just want to get in and munch everything so I think if I just do it really close to the fence, I can poke it through the fence and get it to grow and then I can just keep it uh, tight on this side. So I've put this stuff down here and this stone down. All this stone here incidentally is what I found when I was doing the polytunnel, what I dig up when I do doing the polytunnel. So I'm just going to make a bit of a patio out of it for walking past and to put a chair because this is a nice spot to sit at the end of the day, about half six in the evening. It still gets the sun in the summer. So this is the last place really of the garden or near the house uh, to have the sun at the end of the day. So I'm going to take this low bit of trellis off and I'm going to put that black weed membrane along and that's going to keep the rabbits out, keep the cows out, keep the pheasants out um, and stop everything munching my vegetables. So that's what I'm going to do today, I'm going to get that done. So I'll just turn you around and show you it looking back. So this is what the patch is looking like now. So all this bit that you can see here is going to be for growing vegetables. It's going to be a big raised bed. Um, I'm going to carry that wall on along here, angle it round and then it's going to go up to the wall. It's going to free up our drain so we can get to the drain to keep an eye on it um, between the house and the septic tank. And all this here then is going to be vegetables. I've got asparagus to go in so I'm going to do a permanent bed for asparagus. Then as I said in my last video along the wall here I'm going to put fruit trees, I've got pillar fruit trees to go in, um, I've got kiwi jenny to go in, I've got quite a bit of stuff to go in so I'm just going to do that and put that all along the wall over there and let that fill that space right the way along the side of the polytunnel. So, so that's what I've done with that. So I think that's it for today. Um, I hope you've enjoyed making the fence with me and seeing what I've done. Sorry I didn't get a chance to show you me putting the mesh up but it got really hot, it got towards the end of the day and the days have just run ahead of me. So yeah, it's probably about a week later since I've done that now. So yeah, anyway, I'm going to go on, go and get on with the rest of my day and uh, I'll see you in the next video. So if you have enjoyed my video, please do like and subscribe. Please do hit that bell um, as it does really help me. If you hit the like button, it does really help me with the YouTube algorithms. More people get to see my videos and I get to build my YouTube channel. So I do appreciate your help and your support. So if you do want to buy me a coffee, uh, thank you to those who have already bought me a coffee. It's very kind of you. I'm saving it up for my 50th birthday. And my husband and I are going to go out for a coffee and a cake together. 
because it is my wedding anniversary as well, 29th wedding anniversary. So yeah, so I'm saving up what you've donated so far and I'm going to buy us a coffee and a cake together to celebrate our wedding anniversary and my 50th birthday. So yeah, anyway, if you do, see you again soon, enjoy the rest of your week and I'll see you in the next video. Take care, bye for now, bye bye.